Welcome to session five on the course on prayer two for the second year students at the Canadian Bible Training Centers. We are talking on how to pray. There are things that can help us learn how to pray. Number one, understanding what prayer is not, which we discussed in the last session briefly. And now we will pick up from there to, to discuss understanding what prayer actually is. Prayer is talking to God. Prayer is talking with God. As such, prayer is communicating with God in much the same way that you would communicate to a person. When you communicate or fellowship with another person, there are certain areas that are commonly covered. So if you understand prayer as talking to a person or as talking to a friend, you would understand that it is very powerful. Anybody can do it. Anybody can pray. Anybody can talk to a friend. If you've talked to a friend before, then you can pray. So what are some important aspects to cover when talking to God or talking to a person? You tell them what you appreciate about them. You acknowledge their contribution to your life. You make them aware of your personal needs and the needs of those close to you. You make sure that you settle any offenses that may affect your relationship with them. You share your personal plans and goals with them and seek their input. You listen to what they may want to say to you. Prayer also is listening to God. It's not just talking to God or talking with God. It's listening to God. So we've discussed about what prayer is not. We've discussed about what prayer is. And let's discuss some of the key components of prayer. Understanding the key components of prayer. Components of prayer. Praising God for who He is. Prayer is... Some of, another component is thanking God for what He has done. Another component, number three, asking God for things that we need. Number four, confessing our sins to God and asking for His mercy. Number five, sharing our heart with God concerning our destiny and our innermost desires. There are things that can help us learn how to pray, understanding what prayer is not, understanding what prayer actually is, understanding some of the key components of prayer, and now understanding various models of prayer. The Bible is filled with models of prayer, and we're going to discuss some of those in this section. So, we enter into lesson three and four, prayer models. There are several biblical models for prayer. The first one is the Lord's Prayer. This is the most common. And we find it in Matthew chapter six from verse nine to 13. The Bible says, in this manner, therefore pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive, forgive our debtors. And do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So this is what is known as the Lord's Prayer, which we can also say is the disciples' prayer because Jesus told his disciples to pray this way. But it's not just something that we take and repeat. It is a model. And let's examine that idea. Jesus taught several important aspects of prayer. He taught that our prayer should be addressed to our Father in heaven. So he told them, when you pray, pray to the Father. He taught them that our prayer should be, should be a daily routine. He said, Give us this day our daily bread. So you can ask each day for your daily bread. 
He thought that our prayers should be audible or spoken. Say, when you pray, say. So make your prayers audible. It should be a daily routine. In this prayer, Jesus taught the basic ingredients of prayer. Our approach, our Father in heaven. That is our approach. A major focus of this prayer should be a spirit of thankfulness for what has been accomplished for us in Christ and the position that we have for God that was made possible by his redemptive work. In this prayer model, Jesus taught the basic ingredients of prayer. Number two, our praise. Hallowed be your name. When we pray this prayer, we are acknowledging the attributes of God as our Father. A major focus of this prayer should be thanksgiving for all that God is for us. The third ingredient is our perspective, your kingdom come. When we pray this prayer, we are acknowledging that our Father is above all. His kingdom rules over all, and His kingdom extends from everlasting to everlasting. We are also acknowledging that He is the King or ruler over our individual lives. In this prayer model, we see our perspective, your kingdom come. When we pray this prayer, we are inviting God's rule in our lives. We are giving Him permission to establish His kingdom first and foremost in us, in this earth. We are also acknowledging the realms of God's authority in our lives. We freshly place ourselves in right relationship to parents, employers, civil authorities, spouses, and church leaders. In this model, point number D, our alignment, your will be done. When we pray this prayer, we are making God's Lordship very personal. We are aligning ourselves personally and posturing ourselves in a place of personal submission to God's plan for our individual lives. We are declaring to God that we prefer His will over our will, the will of others and the will of Satan for our lives. We acknowledge our provision. Give us our daily bread. When we pray this prayer, we are acknowledging our absolute dependence upon God. We need natural provision, but more than that, we need spiritual provision. We need food for our souls. In this model, we acknowledge our relationship as a basic ingredient of prayer, our relationship. Forgive us as we forgive others, our relationships. Here we acknowledge that even though we are God's children, we still sin and we are in need of continual forgiveness and reconciliation. Not only our relationship to God, but also in our relationships with other people. So we ask God to forgive us for how we treat other people. We ask God to forgive us for our failures towards God, our shortcomings. When we fall into temptation, we ask Him to forgive us. In this prayer model, Jesus taught the basic ingredients of prayer, and one of them, the next one is our warfare. Lead us not into temptation. That is our warfare. That is the war we fight every single day, fighting against temptation. As we pray this prayer, we are acknowledging that we are all prone to wander and stray from God's pathway. We are admitting that we have a human nature to deal with including lust of the flesh, which war against our spirit man. We are confessing that we are vulnerable and we need God's help in overcoming the flesh. At this point, it is good to put on your armor that God has provided for his people. In this model, one of the basic ingredients is our protection. Deliver us from evil. Here we acknowledge that we have a powerful deliverer from the enemy. 
we desperately need God's assistance to defeat him. As we pray, we are reminding ourselves that we also need to do our part by fleeing from sin, resisting the devil, being sober, being vigilant, and fighting the good fight of faith. Our deliverer is God, and he is bigger than the enemy. He is bigger than our enemy. When he arises over us, our enemy will scatter before us. And so in this model, we acknowledge one of the basic ingredients is our protector. The one who protects us is God. We acknowledge our profession, profession. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. In this prayer, we remind ourselves that our life is all about God's purpose and the extension of his kingdom. We remind ourselves that he alone is the one who has the power to accomplish his purpose. And in the end, all of the glory will go to him alone. We profess your kingdom come. Yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. We profess that everything belongs to him. All the glory, all the honor, all the power, and all of the kingdom belongs to him. Our affirmation, amen. The final word of this prayer is amen. This word means let it be, or so be it. Or let it be so. It is a final affirmation of all that we have prayed. Now we are ready for the day. There are several biblical models for prayer. One of them we've looked at is praying the Lord's Prayer, which is a model which we have discussed. And the second one is praying the names of God. In this second one, we call the names of God when we need them when we need God to manifest on our behalf in line with one or more of his names. So some of the names of God are Jehovah Jireh, the Lord my provider. This means when we come to God and we are in need, we cry out to God and call on his name Jehovah Jireh, provide for me. And we make that request in faith and God will honor it. The second one is Jehovah Rapha, the Lord my healer. When we are in need of healing, when we are feeling sick, when we are attacked by sickness or disease, we call on Jehovah Rapha. We pray according to his name and say, God, heal me. Jehovah Nisi, the Lord my banner, means he's the one who brings victory to me. When the Lord brings victory, I will raise up a banner of praise unto him. Jehovah Mekadishkem. The Lord, my sanctifier. He's the one who sanctifies me with the blood of Jesus. He's the one who washes me clean. When I'm dirty, feeling dirty, feeling that I fell into sin, I call on the one who sanctifies me and plead that he may wash me with, the, with his blood. Jehovah Shalom, the Lord, my peace. When I'm feeling worried, feeling overwhelmed, you call Jehovah Shalom. And you ask him to give you peace. Jesus said, my peace I give you. Not as the world gives, give I to you. So call him Jehovah Shalom. And he will give you peace. Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. There are many duties or responsibilities of a shepherd in your life. The Bible says in Psalms 23, the Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. So when you are in want, call on the Lord. He leads me in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. When you need leading, you call on the Lord and he will lead you. We call on the shepherd when we have various needs and he will answer. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. 
Yet though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. When you need anointing on your head with oil, call on the, the good shepherd. My cup runs over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. That is Jehovah Rohi, the Lord my shepherd. He is the good shepherd. Jesus is the good shepherd because he laid down his life for the sheep. Jehovah Sabahot, the Lord of hosts, or the Lord of heaven's armies. When you are in spiritual warfare and you need God to send angels to help you, you call on Jehovah Sabahot, the Lord of angels' armies, and you ask him to send angels to rescue you. Jehovah Sikenu, the Lord my righteousness. This is acknowledging that our righteousness is a gift from God by faith in Christ Jesus. When you're feeling unworthy, it's time to call Jehovah Sikenu. Call him by his name and ask him to come and remind you of the gift of righteousness that he's given already. Jehovah Shama, the Lord who is ever present. When you call on Jehovah Shama, you're reminding yourself that God is always present. He's never absent, he's never late, he's always on time. And he comes to heal, to save, and to deliver. There are several biblical models for prayer. Number one, praying the Lord's Prayer. Number two, praying the names of God. Number three, the Jehovah names of God and other names and titles of God. Praying the Lord's Prayer, praying the names of God. Another biblical model of prayer is praying the prayer of Jebus. We find that prayer in 1 Chronicles chapter 4, verse 9 to 10. It says, Now Jabez was more honorable than his brothers, and his mother called his name Jabez, saying, Because I bore him in pain. And Jabez called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that you will bless me indeed, and enlarge my territory that your hand will be with me and that you will keep me from evil that i may not cause pain so god granted him what he requested so let's look at this prayer as a model of prayer there are several aspects of this prayer that can serve a prayer as prayer guides for us now jabez was more honorable than his brothers Jabez was asking or coming before the Lord from a position of a, an honorable life. Oh, that you will bless me indeed. Jabez asked for the blessing of the Lord on his life. He said, enlarge and enlarge my territory. Jabez desired an enlargement of the sphere of influence, of his sphere of influence. There's nothing wrong with asking God to bless you and to enlarge your territory, to enlarge your sphere of influence. Number four, that your hand will be with me. Nothing wrong with asking God's hand to be with you. Jabez desired God to play an active role and be present in his endeavors. Number five, and that you would keep me from evil. Jabez asked God to preserve him from evil and bad choices. He wanted God to deliver him from pain and deliver him from causing pain to others, which is a very honorable prayer. Number six, that I may not cause pain. Jabez asked God to help him to be a blessing to others and not a liability. So God granted him what he requested because it was honorable to God. There are several biblical models for prayer, praying the Lord's Prayer, praying the names of God, praying the prayer of Jabez, praying the Word of God. When we come back in session six, 
we will talk about praying the Word of God. Stay tuned. God bless you and thanks for listening.